Hi and welcome back. Now, what does two goldfinches has to do with anything? And especially what does it have to do with this coloring book that is even in French? Well, they got something in they, they will have something in common at the end of this. So, when I did my mix-in review of these Japanese colors. Um, I said I don't know anything about Japanese art and I really don't but I know Hokusai and I have this coloring book that is made from some of his paintings, prints. And here in the front are actually some of the colored versions of his paintings. He, um, I'm not always sure how to turn them. I think these are right side up. Um, and one of the things you might notice here, uh, now Hokusai lived from 1760 to 1849. Um, so that was long ago, and, and we can assume he was using ancient um, Japanese pigments. So here the magnolia is, is kind of muted. And um, the beak on the feet of the bird is kind of a muted orange, and the same with the background is kind of a muted orange. So, um, um, I assume this is a kind of a little yellow bird, but it's it's kind of a yellow ochre. And the yellow and on the flowers is very muted ochre-ish yellow as well. So I guess they didn't have a lot in terms of yellows. There are some fairly bright reds in here, but everything that is yellow or orange is kind of muted down a lot. And all the greens are also toned down by a lot. So um, if if you're looking at this they might not have had and this is the uh, painting he's probably the most famous for the, the big wave um, I would mount Fuji in the background so, so the blues are okay, greens are somewhat okay, and the choice of reds is kind of limited, and there's a little bit of purple, but muted purple. So, maybe those paints give, make some sense. Now, um, <laughs> there was a couple of ladies who suggested that I actually did two of the same drawings. Of, or paintings with this set as well as my mixing set that I got here because these are kind of regular mixing colors and a white and this is the Japanese colors that I showed on that other video um, and this says you should do the same painting with the two sets <laughs> Yeah, be careful what you ask for. You might get it. So, I found uh, from, let me get his name, Stephen Williams. He is a natural photographer in England and he sometimes allows people to to use some of his photos as reference photos. And so I kindly have borrowed two goldfinches from him. One is sitting on a cluster of thistles and the other sit on a branch that's kind of crooked. And since the uh, Hukusai there was doing a lot of birds, I thought it could be nice to paint some more birds, not because I like painting birds. But before I start, and this might end up being a two-part video, it depends on how slow of a painter I turn out to be, I want to take a look at this collection of colors. So we've got white, we got two yellows, we got our two reds, and I hope there's enough paint for this project. 
we've got two blues. Then we've got two greens, a violet and a burnt sienna and a black. And I would like to allow myself some a little bit of a change here. I don't need the greens. I can mix greens with what I got. Um, I could keep that in. But this violet is, is kind of a red violet and I would like to swap that out with my dark scene violet instead. Um, I still, it's not a bought set but it is pretty much close to the colors I would have bought minus the, the greens. I'm keeping the greens in because I don't have a lot of paint and I don't want to run out of blue and green, uh, blue and yellow. So um, this will be my one set. The other set, I do have some extra Japanese colors, but none that makes really sense much to change, I think. Let's have a look. Those are regular colors. Oh yeah, I got here a a golden brown, a deep beige. I'll get rid of that. Um, what else do I have? A beige. Uh, I got another beige in here, so I don't need one. Uh, white. Already got one tube of that. And a Japanese white. I don't really think there's anything in here that is helpful. That is a, still a regular color. Did I only buy two extra Japanese colors? Really? No, I bought three and one of them already had. And one is a wh extra white. Four I bought then. That's a pastel, and these are regular. So, uh, the white again I can put away because there's a tube there. This one I would like in there. Jet black, purple, and the beige I don't need. I don't see I can use the purple for anything, so so what to take out? What to take out? I think I'll take the, the mint green out for now. And I got my list of colours. I know it's a little bit of cheating, but it's within the same range of colours. Um, so where to start? I think I'll start with a difficult one. This one. And I'll make it that one. Uh, I need a palette. And I want a tear off palette. Probably won't. I know I need to find the picture of that particular bird before I start. There it was. Definitely need some reds. I need the yellow, the white, I need the green for the background and for that I need some adjustment blues. I will need this one. I don't know if I need any of the others. Maybe some beige. So, I need brushes. I think we're actually ready. So I'll try and do a wash for the background and then uh, paint the bird. And because I'm a slow painter and stuff, 
and there's this goldfinch in here so I remember what it was that I was painting <laughs> okay I'm gonna do this as a speed paint so have fun mm -hmm.
So that was one of the more difficult paintings I ever done. Um, I could add more details, but detailing with this paint is incredibly difficult. Um, I should build a little volume on the body, but they, um, they're not as opaque as they seemed on my, my swatch test. That's one thing. And to get them kind of opaque, you, they need to be so thick that they can barely come out of my brush. Um, but uh, I like the color scheme. They they mixed okay. I was spizzing maybe a little bit of a, a proper dark black tone, but I managed to mix something fairly decent. Um, now at the distance the camera has and stuff, it, it looks fairly okay. Up close, I'm not super fond of it. I um, I think there it, it it's probably a matter of getting used to it. Now I'm I'm a watercolorist, so I prefer my paint to be very runny, and this is not. This is acrylic, and even though a an acrylic painter would probably find it too. Uh, soft and runny, but um, <laughs> I find it too thick. <laughs> so that's how that is. This needs to get cut. Uh, um, get it trimmed when it's, uh, it's done. Let me take this off. Yeah. So it should be trimmed in like that. Ish. Well, I like to have some extra space around here. I've decided to make, try and make the background go over behind the other bird, so it's only the bird and the, the flowers I'll have to paint with the other paint, uh, so they look like they belong on the same uh, painting. I'm not sure if I can do that because I got a massive drying line right there. But um, I'll try. So I'll break the video and check up how much time I filmed. So be right back.
I'm not going to bother anymore. I'm done. Um, there's lots more details I could go into and stuff. Um, these colors, both the Japanese and these were kind of difficult to use. Um, these colors were easier, the, the, just the regular mixing colors. They were a little softer and a little more opaque, um, to, to mix. And I used the green and I forgot I had used that bluish green over here to mix in. So I might sit down at some point and and go through it a little bit more. Um, I still, I, I like the Japanese colors. I'm not ever gonna buy them again though because there's nothing in here that I couldn't mix if I had the right pigments. And they're not super opaque. And um, yeah, and I won't use them on their own at least. Um, because it was difficult to, to get the right kind of colors for this. I think I pulled it off kind of okay. The head got a little big because I made so many corrections to it. And about the same is about to happen here. Um, I like the color scheme uh, a lot. But I don't like doing details with, with this paint because it just doesn't leave the brush. Unless you kind of push the brush hard onto the paper and then the fine detail part is is over with. And I already mentioned that before I even started on that one. So I, um, I got an idea. And I want to try color pencils on top. And th it, this is not a random choice because these are soft. So I hope that I can... Uh, get these two to go on there fairly easy. Um, I think I want a dark brown. Brown earth would probably be great. Let's see if I can do some detailing with this on top of that because uh, could be nice if I could just do like the base layers with the paint and then the details with the colored pencils because base layers are annoying to do with colored pencils. Oh, and that broke. So if I could get them each supply to do what it does best. Oh, this dusts a lot. It was really difficult to define the difference between one leg and the other here with the brush because I just couldn't do fine enough details. But this is not super good. Maybe on a different kind of paper doesn't take it very well. Never mind. Pencils all over the place. Um, that or maybe acrylic ink for, for super fine details because that flows off my brush a lot better. The pigments in here is kind of coarse, especially in the Japanese colors. Uh, it's got this not only matte but it's got a rough surface not so much with the the more modern type of acrylic wash um, I like the matte finish that that's what I like the best about this so yeah I'll use them up that's no big deal there was one thing and that was something with the light fastness of these because I was in looking at 
and actually on Jackson's if I should order some more of these paints because normally they come in in this size or, or this size tubes and then there's some that has even bigger uh, tubes um, these are just little samplers with what five ten milliliters lemon I don't know it doesn't say or maybe it does but in Japanese um, but I could see that the light fastness of them wasn't very good so I'll be looking into Holbein's acrylic gouache and maybe try a few tubes of those at some point to see if it's something I, um, I'll do so but it was interesting enough to do it was a couple of nice birds and uh, I will do more of these because I need to use them up and um, but I am not sure if it is a medium uh, that is for me for the future I will need to do a little more because I think this is actually the first thing I really painted with acrylic gouache but I like uh, regular gouache a little better in some point what is nice about this is that they don't lift if you mug about on a previous dried layer but this thing about it just wants to stick to my brush that I don't know if I can get over that <laughs> anyways I hope you found this video interesting and helpful so thank you for the the challenge girls I'm always up for weird stuff so please throw me a like and a subscribe and be back for more.